Hey, it's John from Bushcraft and Kitchen, and uh, it's raining, so we thought we'd take a minute and take an in-depth look at uh, the technique we use for speckled or brook trout, whichever you want to call it, uh, up here in uh, up here in Quebec. So this technique pretty much works any time of year. Why well, any time of year? Uh, any time during the season. So it opens in April, closes in September, I think, beginning of September. Uh, works on any trout lake, pretty much any type of trout. It's my go-to, and then we'll talk about uh, maybe other, a couple of other, I don't want to say techniques, because basically we troll for them. Uh, we do a little bit of casting with what's called a MEPS, or what we call MEPS, just little inline spinners. But again, we'll cover all that in, the, in this video. We're going to look at the rods, we're going to look at line, we're going to look at reels, we're going to look at uh, technique, uh, the different lures, different times of year, different depths, and so on. So uh, we should have pretty much everything covered in one, uh, in one video. Perfect, so we're going to start with lures, maybe we'll start with some tools, I like uh, tweezers, I like tweezers, I like uh, long nose pliers, and don't go to the fishing section to buy them, go rob you blind, go to the uh, tool section, or the electronic section, depth of the fish if you have to, like if you swallowed it, and uh, I like um, I like them with a little bit of spring back, and I like the fact that they're small and they're light, and you're still strong enough to... Well, for instance, today we ripped off the uh, clamps on our uh, electric battery, so we had to, you know, go in there, bend the metal, put the wire back, and then clamp everything back in place. So these worked fine, and uh, so yeah, they're basically strong enough to do strong enough to do some medium duty work. So <clears throat> spoons. So inline spinners like this. My personal favorite are these guys. So they're triple spoons. Uh, we call them triple spoons. They might have a, 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 a more technical name. I don't think so. This is basically then uh, about four bucks a pack. Lucky Strike. They're actually tough to find. At least in Quebec, they're tough to find. Um, can, we, can we get a like a close-up shot, maybe? How close, like that? Yeah, there you go. So that way we can see like uh, some of the finish there. So it's pretty straightforward. It's a gold, silver, and then hammered finish. And then hammered finish. Inline spinners. And I like to put a spinner, a spinner. I like to put a uh, swivel at the top and at the bottom. And that goes for any spoons that I'm using. Lots and lots and lots of swivels. So that's my basic technique. And then we have other spoons that are shaped like fish. I actually never even tried these. I have different sizes of those. Small spoons, but more of them. And it's not a, like it's a flexible, uh, it's more of a leader. So these guys are pretty good too. Pretty much all the same thing. And then in this tackle box, we get into more of what John uses. Okay, so here we go. So these are, at least the shape wise, what we refer to as lake clears here. So it's that perfect tear shape. And we like them in silver, gold, and then silver in the back, or silver, gold, silver, gold. These are all Toronto Wobble. Oh, there you go. This is another variant that's very good. It's silver gold, but it's striped. And if you haven't seen my other videos, I keep them in the plastic to preserve the finish because they are quite expensive. And the reason they're expensive is because they have a nice finish. Uh, so this is more of the same, I believe. That's a little excessive. Oh, okay. So we're in the same shape with different colors now. Sometimes when nothing else is biting, these weird colored ones will work. But it's rare that I even, like yesterday we fished all day, didn't catch anything and I didn't bother switching spoons. It's not like bass where I switch baits, I tend to stick to really the same uh, technique, more or less. Then these are Magic. And they're di slightly different shapes, you see they're round on this end and uh, more narrow on this end, they're a heavier spoon. And they tend to wobble like a very wide wobble as opposed to a tight spin. 
and these are fantastic for early spring. They're, they're great all year round, don't get me wrong. Uh, the other John, he fishes with those year round. He can't stand these triple spoons. And to be honest, these cause a lot of resistance in the water because obviously there's three spoons pulling at the end of your rod. So it actually wears out your arm in the long run. It, like you're, if it's not pulling on your arm, you're not going fast enough. So yeah, this like, even myself by the end of the weekend, my hand is cramped up from just holding the rod in that position. So definitely can understand that. But I also have to say that these tend to perform better in the spring and in the late uh, season. So when the water's colder, these tend to work better. Um, whenever it's overcast, it's not the sunniest day. These definitely prevail. When it's sunny, I still seem to do better with these spoons. But when it's really, really, really bright, even I'll consider dropping down to one spoon just because three spoons catching that much light can be a little bit too much of a show. So if you notice, uh, well, the benefit of always fishing two different techniques is that when one of us is really killing it, we switch. So if, um, if I'm really killing it with the triple spoons, John's gonna bite the bullet and put on triple spoons. If the other John is killing it on the single spoon, I'm not, you know, silly. I, I'll, I'll switch down and I'll go to a, I'll go to a single spoon. And the happens, single spoon... Happens quite often, actually. Yeah, happens often. And that's, again, the beauty of having two different guys that tend to fish two different ways and, you know, we're adaptable. So uh, back to the spoons. So yeah, those single spoons are great. I like these as well. They're, um, I call them Williams shape. <laughs> it tends to be the company that first made them or that I first bought them from that tends to get their name. So I'm not quite sure what the exact name of this shape of spoon is, but we call them Williams. And there you have it. This one here is a Williams. It's even written Williams on it. So these I don't use too often, but they, they work. And then I have those in the, of course, gold and silver variation. Different sizes, different weights. And by weight, spoons pay attention. Some of them are thick, some of them are thin. The thicker spoons are made to go deeper. So when you're fishing earlier in the season, you want to fish higher up in the water column. And when you're fishing later on in the season, you want to fish definitely deeper. So we fish with like 50 yards of line out this time of year, but in the summer, we'll push that and almost empty a reel. So 100 yards of line out behind the boat. And I guess that brings me to the hooks. So of course we use these swivels on the top, swivel on the bottom, very important. Oh wait, I never mentioned the maps. So I mentioned the maps, but I never went into details. Okay, one more lure, then we're gonna then we're gonna talk about hooks. So these, and don't tell anybody, but this is actually a secret family combination: pink and white, with the little speck of dots. Uh, do we know what company makes this? I have no idea what company makes this. Another one that's very difficult to find. But it's silly, these work really well. So you're gonna switch out, like for trolling I use a spider wire, because there's no stretch. I'll talk about that when I get into the line. This I use like maybe a four or six pound max monofilament. Spider wire really doesn't cast very well. And this is a very light spoon, so you can't be using a heavy line. You need a very light line to get this to go out there. And you might even change a rod, like you might have one rod loaded, ready for casting, a little, um, like a single piece. And then you'll have like a regular two piece, uh, medium action rod, medium light action rod for the actual trolling. So yeah, fantastic little lures. Can you get closer to the uh, camera? I'm pretty sure I got it up nice and close. I got it in two sizes. Just, uh, just so that people get a good look at it. So yeah, these are very, very, very good. And then like I call them MEPS again because that's the company that made the first ones I bought or the first ones I got. But they're all little wind line spinners. And you can get them in all kinds of different... Well, this is more of an ice fishing spoon, but I use it for trout. A little jigging spoon. And then I have, of course, in all kinds of different sizes and styles. Uh, these are, again, ice fishing, but uh, if you need to get really deep, really fast, they're fantastic. So if you're fishing like dead at the bottom, or jigging dead at the bottom, more inline spinners. Uh, Red Devil, that's a little odd. More inline spinners, but yeah, basically just different colors, different uh, fur or, or feather on the on the treble hook, uh, different thickness of uh, spoon or uh, metal. I guess this isn't even a spoon, just a metal jigging slab, uh, just to get it down deep. So sometimes they're sitting at the bottom of the lake and they're just not moving. So what we'll do is we'll drop that and you want something that gets down. I mean, here the lakes are small. I mean, they're small, they're, they're not. A couple of kilometers usually by maybe 500 yards. So they're not massive, 
but at the same time, they're canyons that filled with water. So when you're 10 feet from shore, you're in 10 feet of water. When you're 20 feet from shore, you can be in 50, 60 feet of water. And when you get to the middle of the lakes, like some sonars won't even read the bottom, they're well over 100 feet. So I think we've marked 180 or something like that, uh, the deepest part. We're not fishing 180 feet, but we'll fish them in 60, 70 feet of water. You'll see them just stack there at the bottom. What we do is we drop our lure all the way down, and we just, once it's down at the bottom, you have no more tension on your line, you lock up your reel, and that little bit of wind is going to push you away. And then as it starts to drag on the bottom, it kicks up dirt, so it's kind of like, hey, there's something going on here, and then I start to reel in up to the boat. And I tend to reel in fairly quickly, and it's kind of like, there's a commotion, there's a flash maybe, I don't know if we're getting light at that depth, but we do have the spoon. And then I'm dragging it up to the boat quickly, so it's kind of like, make up your mind, either you're going to bite now, or you're going to lose the opportunity. And sometimes the trout, the trout react to that. <clears throat> I like them in number fours, and I like them in number ones. I'm a bit of an extremist, but sometimes you got those big, 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 fat, juicy night crawlers, and they're biting, but they're not really biting. So, especially for grays, like a speckled will come up from behind and like hit it, hit it, hit it. And, you know, either you got them or you don't. Um, actually, quick, quick, when they hit it, hit it, hit it, we tend to open up the reels and let out line give them a chance to swallow it and then we'll lock up the reel let the trolling engine pick up the tension on the line and once there's tension if we feel it's there we set the hook so that's kind of like the technique for those but the grays tend to hit the head of whatever they're they're attacking they're you know apex predators so if this if a fish or a worm is swimming they're not going to come up and bite the back of the worm they come and they hit the head so you want a slightly larger hook because those you're not kind of opening the reel letting them eat and then setting the hook you're really like they hit it you hit it you, you set the hook right away. So I like something with a little more meat on it, if you will. Quick explanation. Then I'm gonna talk about uh, the actual line. So the leaders are made out of monofilament, of course, but I actually love to use spider wire. And the reason we use spider wire for trolling is when you've got 100 yards of line out, when a fish bites and you go to set your hook and you pull, You pull with the rod and you pull two feet of line or three feet of line with that motion what's actually happened is you're pulling two feet three feet with your arm but the tip of your rod is bending so you're not actually pulling two three feet of line and then you've got a hundred yards of line out so that line has got stretch in it so you're losing if you will pounds per square inch of pressure because your rod is a giant spring the line, the more of it that's out, the more of a spring you have. So when you pull, you might actually not have enough force to set the hook. There's another reason we don't like treble hooks when we're trolling with a lot of line behind us. Because a treble hook divides the pressure that you're applying over three hooks. So if you get to pull a pound of pressure, you've actually split that into 3.3 pounds per, per, per hook. And that might not be enough to set it, to get it into the meat properly. So same principle. Uh, we want a line that has no stretch. You use a short or shorter, um, how do I say, stiffer rod, but that takes out a lot of the fun. Or you have to buy a specific rod just for that. So my big solution to it is I like to fish out of the second last, the second last eye. Well, the line spun around the reel now, but, uh, around the rod now. But I actually fish out of this eye. I don't use this eye when I'm trolling. And the reason for that is I got more backbone out of the rod. Now, a lot of people will clip the, re the, the rod right here and just put in a new, uh, a, put a new leader, uh, what do you call it there, uh, eye. But uh, no, I don't, I don't like that. I, I like to have the flexibility. And uh, of course, I can afford to work my short, stiffer rod. This is just my way of doing it. So uh, yeah, basically again, always down to, we want as least amount of stretch as possible when we're setting the hook trolling for fish, especially when we have 100, 150 yards of line up. So these are my treble hooks. You can see I have a swivel. You see I have a swivel up at the top. Got my three spoons. And these lures, as much as I love them, they do degrade fairly quickly. So this is actually supposed to be up here, but the stalkers. There you go. And they spin like that. Actually, Lucky Strike is really good about it. If you take these and mail them back to them, they will send you brand new ones. And there's another swivel, and there's my line. So what are we talking about here? That's almost two feet of a liter. Yeah. So I was guesstimating on the, on the, on the 
the lower end. That's how much line I have between my hook and my glass swivel. Oh, here we go. This is John's setup. It's a very similar swivel. Single spoon and then another swivel and then the same two feet of line, the same hook, number four, uh, gamu, gamu, gamu katsus. Rods. I am a huge, huge, huge fan of Shimano. I love Shimano rods. This rod is sold and it just never failed me. Um, also, we have a distributor, a representative, a outlet, I don't know what you call it, but a guy that works for Shimano in Montreal and your rods are guaranteed. So if you break a rod, you just bring it to Shimano and say, hey, can you repair this for me? And they'll either repair it or they'll give you, like for me, yeah, it is this one. You can see a slight difference in color from one to the other. I broke the tip or I broke the bottom. Anyways, he swapped it out for me. So it wasn't the same year. The color was slightly different, but who cares? I got basically a, my rod fixed for free. So super Steve, I think his name is Steve. So anyways, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic rods. I have at least four Shimano rods. Four, I think my noodle rods are Shimano too, that's a five. So yeah, anyways, uh, then I think I have, yeah, okay, at least five, maybe more. Uh, in the family, we must have 20 Shimanos between, uh, between all of us. They're just fantastic, fantastic rods. I think they're made for trout. Um, they're flexible, I use them for everything. I'm not a big fan of bait casters, so I'm like spinning reel pretty much for everything. And uh, I love them for bass, I love them for bike, I love them, they just have a great, they don't weigh a lot, they're well balanced, they're tough enough that they don't, you know, break like super easily. You really have to abuse them, they last for years and years and years. I love a cork handle, I don't know what it is about synthetic, I just can't get into it. If I have to, I have to, but I prefer a cork handle. So I find it more comfortable, I find it breathes better, you don't get all sweaty on the hands. The nets, we use just regular nets, like there's nothing special. I like the ones that have the net made out of rubber just because it's very hard to get the hook stuck in there. And trout, they tend to spit the hook when it's in the net. I mean, we've actually netted fish where it's in the air, and the guy passes with the net underneath it, and the, the hook lets, the, the, the trout lets go of the hook, and it just falls right into the net. So a lot of times, if you do a lot of trout fishing, you realize you lose it right next to the right next to the boat, or you get it into the boat and it spits the hook. And that hook goes flying; it gets tangled into a material like a fabric net. It's a disaster to pull it out. You either cut the net or clip the hook. And anyways, you know what you're doing. You know what I'm talking about. Stick to uh, stick to uh, stick to rubber nets. Uh, less damage to the fins, especially if you're doing catch and release, and uh, less likely, or if you do get it hooked in, it's very easy to get your hook out of it. Uh, trolling, we actually troll a little bit on the quick side, so most people troll really slow for trout, and my mentality is most people troll really slow for trout, so they're not used to seeing something that goes by a little bit quicker, and I've always been kind of more of a how do I say this? Like, I like to trick them into biting. That's my mentality. So, like I was saying before, fishing them in the depths, I don't like to give them an option to sit there and think about it. Uh, I like the I like my troll to be a little bit faster. I like my retrieval to be a little bit faster. And it's kind of like take it now or lose it. And it works fairly well for me. So that's uh, that's pretty much as like, I don't think there's anything else I could cover. Maybe gopal lives. I use gopal lives for the type of trout where the fishing is really going to be aggressive. So if you're doing a lot of casting but you want to use something that's a live bait in like a current where worms and so on are just going to get ripped up and you're constantly changing baits, very good. Another one that I like them for is gray trout. I like to fish with night crawlers. Night crawlers out here, we get them, they're almost, what, seven, eight inches? So uh, they're, they're pretty big on their own, but uh, if you're fishing for grays and you want to go for a minnow, uh, here we're not allowed live minnows. The minnows that are in vinegar or oil or preserved in any which way, salt, they fall apart right away. So you're just constantly changing bait or if you're trolling, constantly stopping and checking to make sure you still have bait. Uh, so yeah, these are awesome. They tough out, you can take them off the hook, throw them back in the juice and use them again the next day. Um, we usually change them about once every hour or so, so for fishing, just take one out, throw it back in the juice, grab another one, thread it on, and keep fishing with them. And uh, I find that, I find I have outfished people with fishing with live bait, fishing with this stuff. I'm not telling you it's going to do that every day, live bait is always better, but um, if you're looking at it convenience-wise, then yeah, this is, this is, this is 
top notch and I know they're gonna tell you you gotta change the juice every year and you can't mix it and blah 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 this can has got to be like 10 years old there's all kinds of different gulp alive lures that have been thrown in there and uh, none of them like they, they work super well so, gulp alive very good um, I mean literally for trout that's it covered spoons we covered maps I used to fish with little tiny rapalas, and again, when I say rapalas, I mean, you know, like uh, crankbaits or stick baits or basically hard plastics. So, little, little, little hard plastics, kind of like the MEPS. Uh, it's not biting so great, you just want to cast as you're trolling along shore, you know, give it something different or stop in a bay and try something different. Blue and white really seems to work well for those. So, blue and white and um, go thin and long, don't go for anything too big maybe three inches, but uh, those little tube baits there, that, uh, what do you call it, tube shaped ones that, excuse me, that dive, and no deep divers, if you want them running maybe two, three feet under the, under the surface, you're really casting along logs that have fallen in the water and they're just kind of running alongside, so you want your bait to kind of follow that log down, if it's too aggressive it goes below it, and you're just going to end up tangled in weeds and, uh, and branches, so it's, it's just not a pleasant fishing experience, so uh, maybe that's the only other thing I can think of. Uh, I mean, for trolling for trout, that covers it. If we go back to river fishing trout, which we haven't done in a few years, then we'll have to do a video on that because that's a, just a whole different ball game, totally different, uh, totally different uh, mentality. And John's nodding; he knows. Um, all right, so I guess that's it for us today. Thank you for tuning in and stick around for that fantastic outro we put together for you. Hey YouTube, thank you all for watching. If you guys like this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all of our latest content. Please feel free to leave comments, questions, or suggestions. Till next time, get out there, enjoy nature, and if you can't, stop by and watch a few vids.